have never had in my whole life good relationships with mechanical objects. I really get into trouble. I have a clock that runs counterclockwise for some reason. A lot of people say, how do you stay married for 41 years? Here's the secret. My wife and I go to a romantic restaurant twice a week. A little candlelight, a little wine. She goes Tuesdays, I go Friday. My uh, wife, she don't go for me either. Not a good looking guy. Well, Halloween, I open a front door, kids give me candy. <laughs> Humor is a way to survive. In 1986, I had just returned to New York after being in Venice, California, where I was drawing cartoons. I wanted to draw something. I had realized that a lot of the magazines I was looking at had cartoons in them. So I just picked my favorite cartoonists and simply redrew their cartoon. Created between 1988 and 1991, Prince's cartoon joke series combined satirical cartoons with deadpan typeset jokes. Silk screened on monochromatically colored or white canvases, the traditionally styled cartoons depicting caricatures in amusing and often scandalous scenarios are captioned with classic punchlines in a uniform type. However, in Prince's cartoon jokes, the text and images are not readily related. Prince strips the jokes and cartoons from their origins and combines them to create uncanny, perplexing narratives. Throughout his career, Prince has consistently challenged conventions by appropriating American popular culture. In his early work, produced during the mid-1970s through the early 1980s, the artist appropriated photographs from advertisements, tearing them out of magazines and from their original context, and stripping them of identifiable captions. And I started uh, looking at the entire magazine, and then I noticed the, the cartoons in the magazines. So I thought that the cartoon should be drawn. And I like certain styles. I just like drawing them. And then I started from that idea, I started looking at joke magazines and concentrated on just doing jokes. And I reset the jokes in type the way they first appeared. These jokes have been told and retold and told over and they're variations for years and years. I started just writing out punchlines by hand. And that to me was again like returning to the first, like re-photographing a beginning again. It was about the simplest thing I could have done. In 1988, Prince transitioned from drawing to painting by silk screening found cartoons and jokes onto canvases that became the large scale, vibrant works known as his cartoon jokes. From that, it grew into um, something that I decided that I should typeset them, get them on canvas, get them on a very traditional art support, neutralize the bravado. So I thought, well, the most conservative thing I could put them on was a stretcher bar and a canvas. Sourced from decades-old magazines such as The New Yorker or Playboy, Prince separated found cartoons from their original captions and paired them with recycled one-liners conceived by classic mid-century American comedians such as Milton Berle, Rodney Dangerfield, or Henny Youngman. You know, a father was explaining ethics to his son, who was about to go into business. He said, suppose a woman comes in and orders $100 worth of material. Now, she pays you with a $100 bill. As she goes out the door, you realize she's giving you two $100 bills. Now here's where the ethics come in. Should you or shouldn't you tell your partner? <laughs> Comprising ephemera of the 1950s and 1960s, the satirical cartoons and dry jokes coupled in this series harness quintessential mid-century American personas and tropes, from macho businessmen and doe-eyed seductresses to taboo relationships, cheapskates, and drunks. However, the seemingly familiar narratives are mutated by the shuffling of text and image from various sources. This brazen series of paintings shocked and defied the expectations of the art world that was accustomed to his photographic legacy. Made during a period defined by a revival of expressionistic gestural painting, the series marks Prince's singular approach to the medium by way of witty cartoons and one-liners that denounce the grandiose, dramatically painterly style that dominated the New York art scene. Created almost 30 years later, Prince's Blue Ripples appropriate satirical cartoons similar to the cartoon jokes. But this time, the salacious illustrations are partially obscured by large amorphous swaths of blue pigment. Recalling the unfettered legacy of abstract expressionists, the organically shaped pools of paint were poured over pages torn from Playboy magazines. The resulting paperly works on paper were then scanned, enlarged, and printed on canvas, eschewing the original act of creation and building on the artist's legendary defiance of the conventional medium. <laughs>